distinguished people as well. You know, Leslie and Professor Weinhardt are sitting in my talk here. Um, so yesterday I talked about uh, this inverse problem for uh, uh, elliptic PD. And I have just shown you results, right? If everything was done, we shouldn't be sitting here and talking about it. So what are the unsolved problems there, right? And uh, so let me tell you a little bit about that. That was the last part I could not finish yesterday. Uh, so firstly, there's this problem called the partial data problem. Okay. So again, what you're trying to do is, you know, this again, it's a fake example, but this it's a good motivation. So you have some medium, and maybe there are cancerous cells in there. And uh, you're trying to detect these cancerous cells in the region D. And the property which distinguishes cancerous cells from non-cancerous cells is this function Q of X. Okay? So the value of Q of X in cancerous areas will be different from the value of Q of X in, in the healthy areas. So if you know the function Q of X throughout the region D, you know where the cancer is, or if there is any cancer at all. Or maybe it's not cancer, you're looking for mines, detecting mines, so the mind is there. Okay, whatever. It's just a motivational example rather than an accurate situation. So the uh, philosophy was that the conductivity of the cancer cells was much higher than the conductivity of the healthy cells. So the so-called conductivity, right? So we're going to use electrical measurements. So what we were going to do is we were going to use the elliptic regime. And we would prescribe, again, so not accurate what I'm saying, but prescribe voltages on the boundary. And when you apply the voltages, I'm going to call it SD, that part of the boundary, D for Dirichlet, where you prescribe the Dirichlet data. So when I say S sub D, that's where you're prescribing the value of QF on the boundary. And this is where you're recording the measurements, right? Earlier on, I looked at an example where you would prescribe your voltage anywhere, and you had choice of varying it as much as you wished anywhere on the boundary, okay? And you are allowed to take your measurement of the current anywhere on the boundary, right? But that's not a practical situation. You can see the parts of the human body where actually you cannot make measurements all around that piece, whatever object, okay? Like breast cancer is an example. This is actually sort of used even in breast cancer, this kind of idea. So breast cancer, you cannot go all around it. You can only be on one side, right? So you're allowed to put voltages only on one side of this object. And your measurements are also only on one side rather than everywhere around. And then you ask the same problem. Okay, can you recover Q with now this more limited data? So that's the so-called partial data problem. Okay, so remember, SD is a subset of the, uh, of the boundary where you're going to prescribe the voltages, where you will prescribe the Cauchy data. Other places you cannot prescribe, so F will be zero there. Right? S sub n is the part of the boundary where you're allowed to make measurements of the current or whatever, okay? That's the only part where you have information. You don't have the value of the normal derivative at other parts of the boundary, okay? So this is a more limited so-called derivative in my own map. So you operate a lambda q, firstly, it only operates on functions f, the so-called voltages, which are supported on sd. And you measure the current only on the normal derivative, only on a part of the boundary, not everywhere. Okay? So partial data problem. So S, P, and S are just open subsets of the boundary. So given this, given this response, for every F which is supported in S, P, S, P could be big or small, whatever. Given this, for every F supported in this part of S, P, and this information is only available only for x on the normal derivative, on the part where you're prescribing measurement normal. Okay? So given this information, can you recover it? So now we have much more limited information. And I hope I made it clear what we're trying to do here. Okay? And so there are some results known, but partial results. So the main question is, SD is some open subset of the boundary, S sub n is some open subset of the boundary. Is this information enough to recover it? Okay? And that's an open problem. That's not solved. What is known here is this result. Okay. So if SD and SN are big enough, how big? So this is one result. So you pick any point A outside the domain D. Okay, just the geometry term. So there are points which can which, and so I'm going to do for convex domain. It's actually true for non-convex, but let's just do it for convex domains. 
So from this point P, there are parts of the boundary which are visible, which I've got the front part FA, the front part of the boundary. And then there is part of the boundary which is not visible, which I've got the back part. Okay, and a more precise definition is, so D is a convex region A is outside the forward and backward part of the boundary R. So the forward part is, you know, you have a point X, you look at the vector A minus X, and it's a dot product of the normal to be non-negative. Angle is less than uh, 90. And if the angle is more than 90, you know you're on the back. 90 or what is it? Dot product greater than zero. 90. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so there is the front and the back part. Okay. And the theorem says the following. So, this is actually a very difficult uh, result due to Kinnick and Shostan. If you know analysis, you'll know these big names. Uh, Kinnick, Shostan, and Norman, 2007. And the result is only in three dimensions. Okay, and it says the following, right? That the partial data problem, uniqueness holds for the partial data problem. If you have two Q1 and Q2, and you look at the partial data corresponding to Q1 and Q2, if they're equal, then Q1 equals Q2, provided the partial data comes from what kind of region? So the the the, the voltages have to be provided in some neighborhood of BA. So you have to provide voltage on the something which is bigger than this. So maybe all the way from here to there. Meaning that we have brought voltage here, 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 here. You can vary it. All the way to maybe a little bit here. You can miss this much. Okay. And you have to be able to measure currents in a neighborhood of FA. So you have to be able to measure currents at least from this much. Okay, so that's what it is saying here. So if SV, where you prescribe the voltages, is a neighborhood of the back side, meaning it's something bigger. And where you're measuring it's something bigger than FA, then there is unique. Then that information is enough, not to do reconstruction, but at least to prove uniqueness. Okay? All right. But so the general case, you know, where SV, where you provide the voltages, a small area here and the where you're measuring is a small area, that's hard. I mean, this is, doesn't come any way close to it. And the way this was done was by using something called limiting. They use the exponential solution R, R here, but in a much more sophisticated way, and they used also something called limiting Cardinal weights. Okay? So they use Cardinal weights for the elliptic problem for the first time, actually. And Cardinal weights were used for inverse problem for hyperbolic PDs before. But the first time I saw it used for elliptic problems. Uh, and there's something called limiting cardinal weights they use there. Uh, but the general problem is open. Open problem. So if S, T, and S and are arbitrary open subsets, can you recover Q? That's an open problem. So that's one open problem for you to work on. Okay. All right. Uh, here is the second one, and which is a little more general, and that is for what I call anisotropic conductivities. Okay. Now when you have you know, cancerous cells or whatever cells. So the conductivity depends on position, yes. But sometimes it also depends on direction. Okay? So you can have mediums where your conductivity, excuse me, gamma x is not just a function, but it's actually a positive definite matrix. So now you're not trying to recover one function, but you're actually recovering a matrix of functions. So that's your conductivity. And the conductivity, instead of being just positive now, is a positive definite matrix which is bounded below by a positive matrix. So you can set up the same problem as before. Okay, This was the uh, Ohm's law, uh, which, uh, which derived from the Ohm's law, V was the voltage. So the, the way the current travels in the medium, uh, the voltage and the conductivity interact with this, to this. This is the PDE. And this is where you are prescribing your voltage on the boundary. Except now V is not a function, it's a, a scalar function, it's a vector function. Gamma is a matrix. Right, so this is a vector matrix vector take its divergence. All right, so this is a single equation, okay? But V is a vector function, now is a matrix, a non constant matrix, matrix depending on X. And you're describing a vector value thing on the boundary, okay? So you can again define the so called Dirichlet Neumann map for every F that you describe on the boundary, you measure the current on the boundary. So these are 
This is a vector function, this is a vector function. Okay. And before this, can you recover a gamma from the additional mountain map? Earlier on, you were studying the case where this was just a scalar function. Now it's a vector. Okay? So it's a harder problem. And uh, the question is, can you recover from this? And the answer is no. Right? So the answer is this. You can actually very easily construct an example where two different lambda gammas will give you the same, two different gammas will give you the same response. How do you do it? You do a change of variables. You do a diffeomorphism, which is basically a change of variables, if you don't know the term, from the domain D to itself. Just do a diffeomorphism. Just keep the values of the, the value on the boundary should be the same. It fixes the boundary. And just with the help of this diffeomorphism, you construct a different gamma. You have an original gamma. You construct this gamma, this matrix. You know, so this is the derivative. So it's a matrix, 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 positive definite, divide by this quantity. And then you know, compose, change the, the variable rate gradient. This is a new gamma. And what you can show is that it just it just imagine it's a simple calculation. You do it, do a change of variables and do all this. You will find that sorry, it's getting it's getting right. right. So you'll find that the district normal map for both of them is exactly the same. Correct? Right? So you say, well, not unique, this I should give it up. Right, you can't do anything like that. But you know, you can think of a change of variables is really another representation of the same domain. Correct? So in some sense, maybe these two conductivity should be really thought of as the same ones. Okay? So maybe it's not so bad. And the other thing is whenever there is non-uniqueness, then you should always ask. If the question says, well, this information is not enough, well then you should always ask, well, with this information, how much can we recover? Right? If you say no, okay, you cannot do it. So the answer to the question is, how much can you recover? And the conjecture is that if you have two conductivities, gamma one and gamma two matrices, and if the Dirichlet Norman maps are the same, then gamma two is related to gamma one by change of variables. That's the conjecture, and that's a very famous unsolved problem. So in three dimensions, is this the only obstruction to uniqueness? Meaning, suppose you have gamma 1 and gamma 2 matrices for which the Dirichlet Norman maps agree. Is gamma 2 related to gamma 1 by a change of variables? Okay, and that's a famous, that's one of the big unsolved problems in this area. So, this and the previous one, which is the partial, partial data problem, those are two big important uh, questions, you say. Okay, so that's the end of this part of the talk. As I said, you know, if you notice, it's very short on. Real mathematics. It's mostly ideas. I have avoided all the hard stuff because I mean all the all the proper spaces and stuff. If without that, we cannot do anything. Yeah. Are there any numerical examples of, of, of this construction of this? Yeah. yeah. yeah meaning, so examples of uh, constructing two different things with the same response. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is it. And actually, so with this is <coughs> this is I was going to say this because I think this is yeah. This is what. I, so you say, you know, this is very bad, you know, right? Because two different conductivities, so change uh, related by a change.